long ago is it since a picture like this would have been either abhorred or ridiculed. But today, the education of small children in methods of self-preservation is recognized as a humane proceeding. U.S. citizen returning to the United States in the previous 14 days will be subject to up to 14 days of mandatory quarantine. So tell me a little bit about the pattern in your family. Is that, was that born of something that went on in your family or is that something different that came later? I would say my dad's always been a, a smart ass and very sarcastic and he's been rough on us. So he's always, you know, so we definitely, I would say I definitely get that from him. But looking at my whole family, I would say I'm, I'm definitely nowhere near the funniest. Wow. Hey, her family is um, funny. I, oh I my gosh. High school Sometimes I, I, if they post something, I might even reach out like, hey, take that down. I'm, I'm, I need that. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that. I, I have done that with friends too. I'm like, uh, take, let's delete that. That is, that's, I got that. I have a person I spent the day with today. And um, naturally, the stuff that comes out of her mouth, I'm like, please don't ever start comedy because she's going to realize that I, I might be doing part of her set. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> she's that you funny. know, your cousin Nasir is hilarious. That, yes. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Look, and I said this, and people don't even realize the stuff that comes out of his mouth <laughs> naturally. I'm just like, oh, let, can I record that? <laughs> 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 no, I'm taking his stuff. Stop me. it. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Not, yeah, Nasir is major, number one. It's hilarious. Naturally. Just oh. Uh. But you not to take anything away from you, you're funny. You're really funny. And you're good at it. You're natural and all the stuff you tell about your kids and stuff just is excellent. Oh, thank excellent. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're... And it's because it's all true. And, um, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, we've been home all this time. We should have a whole new set by now. I'm like, no, my set means more now than it ever did. <laughs> These, I don't have any new jokes. Everything I've ever even half joked about has come totally full circle. Like, <laughs> I, I really want to call Child Protective Services on them. I really do. <laughs> uh, I, I really don't like them anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> Although we have joking before. I, I totally mean it. Like, <laughs> There's so much truth. She's just I telling the truth. Mm. It sounds like you've got a new respect for the teachers. That's what, that, what I'm hearing. You know what I'm saying? Well, that too. But I, I always had a respect with that too. But I have older kids, so I, I've kind of oh, okay. sent the older kids to help her. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. You've got a 24-year-old, right? And a 23-year-old. Wow. Oh. And an 18-year-old. Oh, my gosh. So if they want to live here, they're going to help her do her math. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a lot of people in your house. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. A lot of personalities, too. Yeah. So um, I would like to talk to you a little bit about, since you are you say, I'm only in it for six years. That seems like you've been in it for much longer. So how, how have you found your way into rooms, you know? Just starting off the way you did, I know the boyfriend was part of it. You were tag teaming a little bit, but how how have you found your spots? I want to say I found my spots because I didn't, I would say I didn't know the rules. I didn't know that you're supposed to be doing open mics three, four, five nights a week. And then you, and then you earn your way up and then you host and then you work your way through. I just kind of got on Facebook, started friending people and started inboxing them. And then wow. I realized that we, in DC, in DC's, great place for comedy but i'm a mom i'm a single mom and working full time i can't be out there networking and building with them so what i had to do is i have to maximize on my weekends so if i saw people doing weekend shows i just hit them up in the inbox whether i can get a guest spot at five minutes three minutes whatever i'm coming and i did that from because i had a boyfriend in, in massachusetts and i was way down here all the way up like i started on a friday and you know in new jersey hey can i get a spot anywhere in connecticut can i get a spot pick him up, come back, let, you know, and then get guest spots on his shows. And that's the best, to me, that was even better than an open mic because you have a live, live audience to work with, you know? And they'll definitely let you know if you're not funny too. You don't have to do a lot of open mics to find out if your stuff's funny. You get on one of those shows and you're going to find out real quick <laughs> 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 what to put to the side and what to, you know, what to keep. It's like no training wheels, just straight out there. I think, right. I, habitual line stepper. I'm just like, I need to get this done this way. I, I, I can't do, you know, and some people don't like that, but I only have a certain amount of time and then I got to get back home and be a mom and work full time. So I, I have to maximize my time when I'm out there. So I, I did that. And then I, um, oh, I was also telling you about, I, and then I started the, um, 
Funny Girl Takeover in 2016. And the whole purpose, it wasn't some great scheme, oh, I want to network with women and stuff. It was like, I need some stage time. And I want to start working with some really great women. How can I do that real quick? That was it. It was like, okay, Funny Girl Takeover. Let's do a small, you know, mini tour. Five cities, five days, five comics. And I met, oh my gosh, amazing comics that I never would have worked with within that time frame otherwise. And because they knew I wasn't making any money, they just came and did it. I, wow. The people I've worked with, like, I, I think I paid the host during those shows, and that was it. Wow. But we went from seven people in an audience to, say, not huge, but 50 or 60 in an audience. Amazing, amazing. It's like one thing that we hear a lot on this show from from folks who have made it are are these sort of take charge of it yourself stories where they don't wait. They're not waiting for people to grab them. They're starting their own thing. And so, in fact, last week, Damon Williams was t telling us the same kind of thing about like call people and ask them for a spot. Yes, so yeah. it's like, how would you advise um, folks that don't feel ready to start doing that? Like, what was it in your process that made you just call people and ask? I don't know. That's just, that's just not me in comedy. That's me in, in life. So to me, it was like, okay, I Facebook friended. They, they accepted me. Hey, I'm a new comic. <laughs> and that's the thing I like about comedy though. I love with comedy is that they, once you, they hear how long you've been in, they kind of understand that. So they don't expect a lot from you. Right. So you don't have to lie and say that 30 or 45 minutes. Once you say I've been in three years, they kind of know what, what you have. And most of them, I've been set up a couple times, I'm not going to lie, but most of them, especially I would say the urban rooms and the men would put me in a position to win. That's awesome. I wasn't being thrown out there first. I wasn't, they kind of cushioned me. I, so I've been spoiled just to say, I've been, I've been really spoiled. They put me in positions to win. So therefore they understand that she, she no, she's not beastly now, but two, three, <laughs> four years, let's watch her and see. And in the meantime, they, they work with you. That's so great. That's such yeah. a beautiful part of this, especially as a woman and a woman of color, you know, yes. trying to do this. Uh, it's a little bit and daunting. You super know? pretty with fly hair too. Yes. That don't hurt. Of course. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I, I would reverse engineer it. Like most people complain, why is there only one woman on your flyer? So to me, if I saw no women on a flyer, then I know that you probably needed a woman. Like, you know, you, 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 need, you might need me. So then I'd hit those people up. Like, let me be that, that one woman or let me be that second woman on your flyer. I don't pressure them. If they don't want women on their flyer, fine. You probably need one. So let me go fill that quota. And then I got, I've gotten shows that way. Yes. I, don't I love that about mentality. Them. That's great. Yeah, no, I'm not going to fight them. That's their yeah, show. Yeah. Yep. Good for up. you. Killer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so let's talk a little bit about Project Hilarious because uh, you were, I think you kind of touched on it, the five and five and five and five, but how did that all come about? Is that, was that the actual woman's no, it's, bill? No, started as Funny Girl Takeover. Right. Um, and I also, the same way I hit up, the same way I hit up comedians and promoters, I was hitting up Funny Bone when I lived in Virginia for, hey, I have this concept for a show with the five on, you know, maybe I can do this monthly at at your venue and he ignored me for a very long time <laughs> <laughs> i took it personal i, I thought how I'll take dare he how dare he he didn't know who i was like i'm two years in do you not know who you're about? <laughs> 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 it was funny but once i came up here it's funny i moved to massachusetts at what year four years in or whatever it came he goes let's try it so here i am with the funny bone we tried it. We, we did really well. First show. He, you know, we try, Actually, we tried it Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. Right. Oh, it was scary because that's not a good time slot for Funny Bone, right? He gave it to me. We did what we did. We filled it out. Um, as soon as we finished the show, he gave me like four more dates for the rest of the year. Oh, at wow. the same time frame, though, but lost my mind. Pulled off. You know, I let everybody know. No, I don't have a big budget, but if you can come in. Also, being on a funny bone comedy club stage, you know, that, that's good for your resume. People sure. want to get into these clubs. So he allowed me to do it. So I went from Funny Girl Takeover to, I think I did, what did I do? Funny Sundays with Women. I did something like that. But then, then he switched me from Sundays to Thursdays and Wednesdays. So then I said, you know what? We're going to be Project Hilarious, the Funny Girl Takeover. And so the past couple of years, well, before this kicked off, I was at the Funny Bone once a month doing a funny uh, show, same, same format. 
And then I just joined in Albany. Albany had just added on Albany Funny Bone. Wow. So you were doing DC every month is it, or was it? The no, at that point, Funny Bone was Hartford. Hartford. Okay. I I, the one in the mall. That's the <laughs> but, yes. But I had started stalking him since I was in DC. <laughs> That's amazing. I always That's say so I stalk. Funny. It is stalking because you're sitting there waiting. Okay. I, I emailed him. Let me wait 90 days. Email him again. You know, <laughs> let him see what I'm doing. And then finally he's like, okay, okay. I love that. That was spirit. my last indoor show there at um, oh, that's right. March that's the 12th. Wow. Yeah. 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 That, that so, venue yeah. is so interesting to me. I just, the first time I ever had to go there, I was like, where are you? And they're like, we're in between Bertucci's and like some clothing stores. Like, wait a minute. Right. Yeah. But it, it's a place that gets a lot of action. You know, it's a funny book. It bone, does. You it know? does. And we do decent for not, you know, not being a, a major traveling international headliner. We have some pretty packed out shows and they're fun. They yeah. Are, you know, and they just, they give me the energy to go on. I could have a whole month of terrible show, but once I get there, between the energy you get from the, the other female comics and the support from the funny bone. And I'm telling you, I, I live on cloud nine for those shows. That's awesome. They yeah. were excellent shows. Really good. They were really fun. Oh, Kim's been there several times. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Excellent. Just you felt and so high you. when you left there. You Erica was an excellent host. Excellent. She awesome. promoted it very well. You we were treated well when we got there. And you got to meet a lot of female comics that you never right. even knew existed. Right. Really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Were you grabbing them from the region or were you grabbing them from local or? I started local and I got a little scared grabbing them from like New York and New Jersey because then there's traffic and, you know, and them making it there. But when you are, oh, when we started combining that, up, like two local and maybe two coming from New York and New Jersey, you, you couldn't. It was wonderful. That's awesome. Them, I met so many hilarious women. So I can't wait for COVID to be over so you can start that back up again. That would be lovely. That'd right. Be great. But, in case, I don't know, COVID might be here a little while, so we're, we have to do something else. Like I said, I'm, I'm in, the, in the mix. I'm not jumping out there like everybody else, but it's not like I'm not thinking about it. I just don't want to, you know, jump out there huge and then be doing the exact same thing as my neighbor, you know? <laughs> right. You know. It's the Quarantine Collins Show. This is the half point. Um, we have Erica Nolan with us right now. I'd uh, like to open up the room for anyone who'd like to ask questions or give her comments. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you're not speaking, mute your mic. Okay. All right. So Will Stein on the line, he wants us to give a shout out to his boys, uh, Seth and Nathan. So I just want to say what's up, Seth. What's up, Nathan. Um, you're now part of the quarantine calling show. And I also want to comment, you know, I mean, on, on Erica, like I have, um, of course, Boney drags me around everywhere. <laughs> so I just, I'm the one that got a hold of her. It's like, I'm going on stage. You hold my purse. Don't you, <laughs> don't you let nobody watch my drink. Don't you let nobody put me. She got, she put a whole like coaster on it, then a napkin on top of that, then a plate. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> <Aww>. So, but. <laughs> So, but, uh, but I, I mean, for you to just come in the game like that, then also um, be a producer. I mean, the shows are, I, I, you know, are very professional and well put together. And, and like I said, uh, you know, the quality is, um, un, you know, remarkable. So I just wanted to uh, make oh, that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I that, got beat up by you guys too. <laughs> oh my gosh, the guys beat me up about this female show. They 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 got in my inbox and they they ooh. <laughs> but you did do a male show. That's the one Tim was on with Ken and um yeah. uh, uh I did I did Philip was on it. Yep, and Artie. Yep. Phil, um that was an excellent show. Well, I came and crashed the party. You know, it's like I'm always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But he's like me, like just get me on. So right. That's, that's that's a, simple. Like, get me on. I want some of this smoke. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> but that's right. how it is in the beginning, though. You just get in where you fit in, right? Then you, right. you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it is. Just let Running me up give that, that five minutes. Three. Oh. <laughs> I did two male shows. I had to do a second one because then the guys that weren't on that show hit me up and tried to get me <laughs> again. <laughs> they was waiting in the, waiting in the um, courtyard to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, it's nice to have the female power producing and making the calls every so often, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It really yeah. is. Even with the men shows, it, it really it felt good too. Yeah. 
Yeah. What did I say? You going? You going? To say? <laughs> <laughs> don't you go over that light? Don't you go over that light? If you ever want to work in this club again? Don't you go? <laughs> Exactly. But did it doing that though? It helped you, like it put you in a position to open for some really major headliners too, right? Yes, because you're right with the funny bone. Well, first of all, I, I again stalk and hang in there after the show because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you got the Sunday show and they have people coming in and need somebody or you know. And the funny bone has offered me. I've done ho I've done hosting for them. For quite a few people so and I've been fortunate to do that I have I've just got I just perfected it how to have everything in my car when you're ready for that funny bone call because you know he's calling you about six and the show starts at seven so you <laughs> have your earrings and your lipstick and your second set of shoes I finally had it all down pat like even my kids knew to call like hey I knew I thought I was coming home to watch movies but I'm heading over to Harvard <laughs> <laughs> I got so called yeah, in Sunday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when they called me for the Tony Wood show, I was like, I was on the highway. <laughs> Tony Woods. Oh yeah, that I was, bet you were. Yeah. yeah that show was deals. awesome. Oh, the whole, the week, it was awesome. It really was. And so was do you have any crazy road stories, Erica? I wish, I really don't. Um, my yes, you do, but don't up. tell them. <laughs> I was about to say, I only my, my car getting crashed up can make no more than me. <laughs> my I'm sure I have tons, but um, <laughs> I, I was there. there. That's why I'm saying, don't say anything. <laughs> oh. What you want? Tell it, tell it, tell a little bit. Uh, after the Tony Woods show, we 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 parted pretty hard after that show. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm like, did we? I'm like. <laughs> Uh, never mind. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we gotta get some witnesses to call we in. Yeah. We had a few cocktails, but that, you know, maybe that's why she doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. Dead. And oh, because Tony, Tony was as the most wonderful mom ever, and she drinks Riesling. Yep. Riesling. Yes. She's, yeah, she's dope. Yep, she's cool. Sorry, yeah, I might have had too many. <laughs> 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 So many. I have to call Kim back now. I'm like, hey, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So tell us about a show where um, you, you know, you knew at that point, once you got off the stage, you knew that you were, you had it. Mm, that I had it or that I, like, I was not leaving. Because from the very, from the very first show, yeah. when I heard those laughs, that was just that. That was at the DC Improv. It was the, you know, the first funny for five minutes or whatever show. I'm telling you, I went out there. Of course it's packed because you have all, you know, it's like a little kid's graduation. That the funny, the, the first show there. And so yeah. you have all your work friends and everybody and it's packed. And as soon as you say something, there's like <laughs> and all this noise. At that point, I, I was embarrassed to say, but I was like, I'm never leaving. I'm, wow. you know. But I didn't say that because I'm I have a logical side too. My logical side said you just take it show by show and as long as you're having a good time, you're gonna continue. Yeah. But no, I knew that I was never ever leaving the stage after after that. You know? Wow. Have you had any bad experiences that made you think, you know what, I'm gonna give me a day job? <laughs> <laughs> I have had some where you come up when I started, um, probably I would say the first two years, I think I'd come off stage. And especially um, in urban rooms, um, they'll pat your back. Like, they're like, girl, sis, it's okay. Like, you're talking about oh. your kids. You're thinking it's funny, and they just pat you back. It's all right. Oh. It's all right. No, but, like, this was supposed to be jokes. <laughs> or they ignore you. If yeah. you're not funny, you have played, well, they won't even give eye contact when you get off the stage. You know? Wow. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm, why am I doing this again? I got what, 50 hours? <laughs> You know, that's rough, but you go home and you reset and you go back out there. And of course, if I had like maybe 10, 20 bombs in a row, then probably never. But usually some point in there's another show that just brings you, gives you that high again. And you're just like, what, whatever it was, I'm going to fix that part. And, and you do, then you, you know, as you're in, you get more and more laughs, less and less bombs. I haven't had terrible bombs. And I, I think that's, I don't know what that's because of. Maybe they're just afraid because I'm such... I'm kind of the nice person, so they're afraid to actually like boo me, but they just, 
Like, we're just not going to talk to her after the show. <laughs> so. And you're writing, do you, is it all off the cut? Like, I know you were saying I'm just myself and I like drink some wine and then I'm, you know, that's how I'm funny. But do you write? Are you a person that writes? No, I write it out because as I write it out, I can, that's how I kind of, uh, categorize it as well because then I if I have a new joke I'm like okay it can go up here these are my kid jokes and then I have an order I go to, you know I shit on my kids and then I shit <laughs> on my ex-husband and then I go into dating and then I, <laughs> so if anything fits then I usually put it where, where that goes like okay this is a this is another thing for the kids part so no I write it all out and I'm and then depending on how many you know how much time I get for a show I either cut it or you know and do stuff like that. So no, I, I write my stuff out and then it helps me remember it as well. And are you one of those people that writes all day, every day, or do you have a specific like time? I'm terrible. Oh, I used to be, I am so terrible. And it's not just because of the 2020. I, I've been terrible for a while, but I need to get back into that writing every day. But I do keep, I keep a notepad open on my uh, computer all day. So I write whatever the ideal is. Or if not, I record it. So if I ever die and you get my phone, there's like a million... <laughs> Three we minutes, two second die. things, and screenshots of whatever the idea was. I go back to it, and I'm like, "What? What was I saying, though? What did I mean?" <laughs> so, but the process is a little different now that you are, you know, have more time behind you now. So you probably don't have to write every little thing because you'll, you know what I mean? You're right. I either write the feeling or just it could be a couple words now, you know, unless it's new, new and. I, you know, and then I'll, I'll write it out and I'll break it down. But right now it's a, okay, wh who is it about? Where is it going? Is it the, you know, the kid, the ex-husband, the boyfriend section? Is it, you know, I have a whole section for wine that I haven't even put into my set yet. <laughs> if people oh, wonder, okay. they're always drinking wine, but I never, I have tons of jokes about it, but I'm just, I get a little late. Sometimes I get lazy out there. Sometimes you're like, this isn't the time to start new shit. <laughs> <laughs> it can get scary though. It, it um, you know, putting new stuff in because right, once right. you put some distance between you and bombing, you never want to go back there. <laughs> back to that, you're right. So you hear some, and if I hear silence, I speed up, which is terrible still. I'll speed up instead of just talking. Then I'm like, I'm trying to get up and off. I'm like, like where's the light? <laughs> get me out of here. Is there a back door? <laughs> I, I'm quick to run too. <laughs> yes. Oh, nothing like that silence sometimes. Oh, God. <laughs> We got to stand on the end of the stage for Boney and just be like with our arms crossed, like <laughs> no, go back out. <laughs> Keep <That's> going. We're <laughs> <laughs> playing defense on the edge of the stage. <laughs> I'm quick to run. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> we got a runner. We got a runner. Got a runner. Dr. Book. Code Dr. Book. <laughs> I was like, you're doing a time. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'll give the money back, too. I'm like, is anybody uh, running yeah. here? Take this check. <laughs> I can remember refusing money like when I did so poorly and I got off stage early like I when I bombed out of control in front of a Jamaican crowd and I didn't take the money and this guy cursed me out for like 30 minutes he's like you always take, take your the money, money. Yeah. it's like I don't give a shit how bad you just take your money I get, really I gave money back I was in um Virginia Beach I gave the money back I was like listen I don't need this type of pressure <laughs> 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 Like, I'll figure out a way. I called my dad like, Dad, can you give me some gas money? <laughs> <laughs> Take the money. Take the money. It was budgeted like, for you. Just like, you know, you had 10 more minutes. Like, mm -hmm. Just take it. I I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at least I got that option. There was times I, I bombed so bad I had to escape with my life, man. Yeah, I thought we was going to have to fight. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I took him to Slades. Yeah. <laughs> Slades is the. the yes, I found that Slades. I found this. I mean, but I, yo, yeah, I was about to get jumped by a whole club, and it wasn't even me. It was like I was uh, <laughs> riffing with some woman who just came to the edge of the stage, and she was just yapping at me, and I was yapping. Oh, at me. yeah. I yeah. was like, I was like, security is there security in it? <laughs> Rolled her sleeves up. I was shook. I was like, we're going to get in a fight. We're going to get jumped. I was like, great. I'm like, at least I'm going to die doing the thing I love. Like, isn't Comedy is the craziest thing, isn't it? You are so obsessed that you could have an experience like that and still be like, 
Somebody call you back up. Yeah, I'll meet you. Yeah. <laughs> How much time do you want me to do? You know? Right. Yeah, exactly. What hotel in 20 bucks? I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anywhere, right? The back of some right. closet somewhere. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. That's Free chicken really wings and beer? Okay, I'm with <laughs> Chicken wings. Chicken wings. Thank you. I've done chicken wings and wine a lot of times. <laughs> You just got my, you get, take my wine tab. I'll be there all weekend. Yes. <laughs> don't be saying this. Don't be saying this. Like people well, should be like, oh, so you're serving. I don't, I'm not afraid because I'll say no too, you know, and six years in, I probably shouldn't be saying no's, but I'll, I'll I got a lot of no's in me too, but no, if it's a, a, a show that you want to get on and there's, you know, who's on the lineup and like, no, I'm getting a piece of that. Yep. <laughs> what are the dream what are the dream shows for you right now where would you like to go oh my i guess i'm i don't go i guess my expectations aren't like everybody else like i just want to be able to do this and make a living off of it and no i don't have to be at madison square garden or you know or anything like that but to be able to do whatever three weekends a month or whatever it is and actually make enough to to cover to, to live off of and to, you know, maybe get a newer car, you know, would be lovely. Cause I just, I love it that much, but no, if I could reach further and, you know, and do bigger shows, that's fine. But I just, like I said, just enough to, to cover my expenses at this point. <laughs> I actually, I don't really want to complain. I finally got to a point where the last two years where I was able to cover my expenses. That's so great. I can't even say that. And I'm fortunate to be in at six years and to be able to say that because some people can at, you know, at that point. So to be able to take a show and, and say, no, this, this covers it. Plus I get back and have, you know, little money. I, I, again, I want to say I've been spoiled in, in that aspect that I, um, I, I, I don't know, I, I make decent money. I was making decent money. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably have to start all over again now, but it is what it is. So it sounds like you're really in it for the love. I'm sorry, Tim. Go ahead. You also was doing something um, in um, Pittsfield, right? The Berkshire, was it the Berkshire Theater? Because I, I think oh, I was on that show. Thank you. That, that yeah, was, I was, um, I, I started with emails to them. I started with emails. I live in Virginia, but I'm up in the Berkshires once a month. Can I get on and ho a host or be a guest spot? So again, that thing didn't also, that didn't come and roll out until I moved here. Once I moved here, they gave me some guest spots up there. They used to have a, a Thursday show once a month. Mm -hmm. And they gave me, I was, I was able to do some guest spots. And then I got a feature. And then finally, uh, the lady that left said, hey, you know, work with this new guy. And the guy hit me up. He's like, why don't, and I, or, I'm not sure if I proposed it to him or he proposed it to me, but he said, why don't you book the host and the feature and I'll just do the headliner. Nice. So he gave me, yeah, he gave me six month increments. And of course, wow. I booked myself a couple times as well. But <laughs> I was able to, to book the um, up at the Colonial. It was called the yeah. Comedy Garage. Okay. Yeah, that was nice. Right. That was a good room. Really nice room. We we're working on it. It was, um, we were working on it. It wasn't quite comedy centric, or as they understood that a 90 minute show meant this, you know, they I don't think they had the, the structure, but we were work. I, we were getting there. You know, that's great. Yeah. They let kids in and in, in, in my set, I was like, oh, great. My <laughs> Every <laughs> joke. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. And, yeah. I, I, and I feel like, you know, especially me being the person that booked it, like now I feel like I own it. Like I didn't know, I couldn't even tell you ahead of time. You know, you look out and see a whole table of kids. You're like, are you, are you friggin' kidding me? <laughs> I just cussed I'm their one of the dirtiest comics, but come on. <laughs> like a lot of Kim's jokes are all focused on that. So yeah, I could see, I could what? see that being a struggle for you, Kim. Cussing yeah. parents out. That's okay. <laughs> I cussed them all the I just out. bring I the like, kids cause I'm gonna cuss y'all out. It was getting there though. So I'm hoping that they pick up the pace too and we can get back on board with that. I was excited that I was able to, they did a nice write up for me too in the city. I was in the paper and I went into work. I was so embarrassed because when you're a comedian, you almost feel like um like Superman with your your like your tail showing. So you go into work all with your suit on, and then here you are. I looked up on the um the counter and see my face on this newspaper. I like just I hit it. I was like, how many others are out there? Like, oh my god, isn't you that you? It is. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you don't want them to see that. Like, cause I I don't have a potty mouth, but I do I do swear in my shows, so I don't want I don't want my coworkers knowing. 
Yeah. Well, <laughs> now they know, I guess, right? Yeah. Right. I do say a few. Well, I don't want to say a few. I say more than I should, but. <laughs> God, you're making me feel bad about my mouth. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> But it doesn't, not really, because your set doesn't seem like that. If someone were to say, I would say she's PG-13. I don't, you know, maybe I, and it could be because I'm used to, to swear words or, you don't even swear though. It's her ad Thank you. Her ad libs, you know what I mean? Right, her set is clean, but you leave her to her own devices. You know? <laughs> it's going to come out. The F is going to come out. Right, right. Yeah. It just oh. comes out. They told us we couldn't swear at this outdoor show and the second Tim handed me the mic, literally the second or third word, I was like, fuck Tim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't realize that until like you have to send a clean tape to somebody. Uh, and I'm like, I, I couldn't get within three minutes before I said another front word. And I'm like, who is this person? I don't even know you. Like, I'm looking at the tape, like, do I really? And I do. I'm like, every couple of words, I'm like, F this, F that, fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see somebody put out one of those ads for like clean comics for children's shows, I'm just like, I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't even trust those people. Like, how do you not swear if you have kids? <laughs> uh -uh. I don't trust them. Something's wrong with them. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so what kind of advice would you give to folks who are behind you, who are just starting out, who are just trying to figure out whether or not they should go and, and what they should be doing and if they should try comedy, what would you say to them? Uh, first would be like, don't, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't get there, just don't do it, just walk away, go do that nine to five job. Uh, and then the second, if you're gonna do it, you have to do it because you love it, you really do. Because even the people that, whatever success is that make it, there's so many decades of grinding and working and not doing it that if you don't love it to some aspect you're not you know it's gonna yeah. change you yeah so if you don't enjoy it that this much like huge like i even say i i say married to the mic like i'm afraid if i have to go out here and date people that they're not even gonna understand this level yeah you know and they you know so it, it it's it's different I mean, it was cool that you're, you're dating a comic sometimes because I don't know how somebody who doesn't get it would be able to, is it troublesome to date somebody who's not a comic? See, I don't know, but I, I fear that. I really do. Like, okay, they might think it's cute for the first three shows. And after that, I'm like, okay. You know, holidays, <laughs> Start talking about them. Yeah. Right. Well, well holidays, they want to be at a cookout or something. Holidays, we want to be at a stage somewhere. That's right. You know? But they just have to buy into your dream. That's what it is. Like my husband knew. He was like, we just went to every show and he was down for me. Like, so that's just what it is. That's right. cool. And that's a special type of person because other people are going to be like, okay, well, how much money are you making? Really? Like, I'll just give that to you. And then that's going to be a huge fight. I'm telling yeah. you, don't do that. So no, I was fortunate when I had the, the, when I was dating someone that was into it, but I had mentioned that that's also hard because you get on the show and, and he did well and you didn't. The car rides are different. <laughs> <laughs> or, you, or you thought you did well and he didn't. And, you know, you want to be like, did you hear me? Let's play it again. Here's my phone. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> pumped. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, fuck that show. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> You'll be up at three in the morning listening to each other's tape. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, look at, oh, no, you need to do this. Oh. I'm telling you, it's, it's wonderful. But it's also the worst thing ever because you I don't know. You can't get outside of that bubble. You know, can we not true. talk about comedy? You're like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if y'all ever start sounding like each other. That that's the one thing I always wonder about. Like, yes, just you, you may do that too. Yeah, or I'll get mad about you didn't. You never said that joke before. That sounds really similar to what I talk about. <laughs> Feel my joke. Yeah, or my, what I'm my idea, my approach. You weren't talking about kids before 2000. <laughs> <laughs> What's that about? You know, it's my intellectual <laughs> property. Right. You Pay me. Personal. Yeah. yeah. But no, it's, oh, like as a comedy, it's a love hate comedy. I'm like, I'm so glad that I'm relaxed and relaxing from it, but then I miss it so much. But when I look at the pace I was doing, I don't even know how I was doing it. When I look back at that pace, I'm like, I don't even know if I can get back on that, on board with that. Literally, like just jumping in Fridays, leaving work, back on the highway. 
coming back home at midnight, going back out the next day, rushing in between, you know, and luckily my kids are, they're, they're great kids. So um, once I put it in, I was like, this is another child here. Like I don't have four kids. I have five kids now and you guys have to allow me to, to do this. So they were, they were great. And they're older too though. So, so uh, this is the quarantine call in show. So on that topic, since comedy and everything stopped, I always ask this, this, this question um, and like everything just, just closed up the world closed up. What, you know, what have you been, been doing in the way of like creativity or comedy or what, what have you, or if anything, <laughs> or wine? <laughs> Drinking a lot of wine. <laughs> I hear you. I do. I started out and I was going to do, I did lives. I think the first three or four weeks in, or maybe four weeks in, like was doing a check-in live and some were well-received and others weren't and just checking in. How's everybody doing? But I, I got, those. yeah, but I kind of got overwhelmed with it. And I was going to, I thought about how can I get a guest in and how do, at the time, Zoom and other things weren't uh, streaming to Facebook. So it was hard and you couldn't call in from Facebook. So like, how do I get somebody to, and then I finally just sat down and said, let me just sit down and think about this. Cause I just jumped out there. I was like, just jump because what else am I doing with my time? But I wasn't focused with it. So I was like, let me sit down and focus and see. And it's probably not going to be much more than what I was doing, but I just felt out of control with it. And then once it, the, once the COVID actually, you know, come June and then actually grass, I was like, wait a minute, I got to sit down for a minute. I got to actually prepare my, my mental health and everything as well. So I slowed down. And I haven't done much with comedy at all, actually. I started looking, well, I'm not gonna say I haven't done much at all. I'm looking at products and merchandise and how I'm gonna come back out there again and things like that. But as far as shows or even interviews, a couple of people hit me up and I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm good. Wow, we're so honored that you joined I know. us. No. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, we done, we done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I was, I, I, no, I'm honored that you guys invited me in. I'm like, they think I have some shit to say? Uh-huh. Because <laughs> we love me? you, man. We think you're funny. Hell yeah. Oh, thank you. See, it's funny because when comedians are like, they actually like me. Like, you know when people like you, fans, but when other comedians like you, are like, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're the biggest comedy geeks ever. I can speak for myself. I I can't get totally. It. Yeah, yeah. I love so many great comics, including you. No, I'm telling you, I have sat through a few of Tim's, but I've sat, sat through Kim's. It doesn't matter how many times I've heard her. I'm I like know. dying, like it's the first time. Like, are you listening to this? <laughs> yes. she has that, she has what, that X factor. I'm a comedy groupie, and that's what I love about it too. Is that when you're in a show, I'm on the show, which is wonderful but i can sit back and watch mm -hmm. these people for free yeah. these amazing underground people that nobody knows about hilarious and just you know a lot of comics like well i don't listen to other comics because of this no i'm getting like a free show because i already i love comedy so, shit I, I go to open mics <laughs> say, and just watch them yeah and just watch right yeah. just watch the magic happen yeah it's it's amazing to me and the thought process with it I'm like how did you get from this so that, you know, how do you, how do you do, how do you pull it all together with these ideas? It's right. amazing to, still to me to watch other people. Who are your heroes? Yeah, I was wanted to know that too. Oh my gosh. My heroes. Well, you guys, of course. I love, <laughs> I love seeing, I do. I love seeing Tim because I've seen him for so many years to, to his, his evolving, which is wonderful. Even to the, the, the Man Crush Sunday that we had. What is amazing watching him. Kim, because Kim doesn't even, I don't know, like she doesn't <laughs> even know how fucking funny she is to me. No. It feels like that. And maybe, maybe that's part of it, but how, you know, you're like, oh my gosh. And then I, I've never looked at any of her things before that, but once, now that I see this, I'm like, let me look at some of her other stuff. Because I had a joke that was really close with Kim's. And once I realized it, I was like, ooh, I gotta drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, what did I say? Oh my gosh, I'll have to remember. But I said it twice. And then I after I said it, I looked at one of your um what was it? Nick at night. And I heard you say it. Because you say something similar to me with your divorce about uh oh I don't even know what it is. Well whatever it was, my joke was like, oh I, I'm free, I's free now or something yeah. like that. I's free. But once I realized once but once I heard, I was like, God <laughs> damn it. Okay, throw it away, throw it away. But sometimes I can catch myself on the mic saying it, but I'm like, I, I visually saw her say it, and now I said, ugh. 
I think sometimes the comedians have parallel thoughts. I mean, it's just, that's what it is. And, and it was that, but it doesn't matter that it was that because I work closely with you. And now that I've seen it and acknowledged it, even if it's parallel, I have to give it up. And now my brain has to go deeper or my brain just has to go somewhere else. So you know, there's tons of parallel thoughts, but when you're working in close proximity with people, you, you yeah. got to give it up. And it's not the worst thing to give it up because that means I just have to train my brain. I have to work a little harder, you know? Who else? Oh my gosh, like huge people, like yeah. Wanda Sykes. Oh yeah, yeah. She's Dave dope. Chappelle. Oh amazing, yeah. Right. Yes. Um, Artie Rob <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> that name has come up a couple times tonight. Just saying. He's I've amazing. seen him from the beginning to now. Watching him, he's yeah. funnier offline than online. At least I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a long time, but offline, oh my gosh, you're like, why aren't you bringing this shit? <laughs> to the fourth, you know, you saw kids and boobies and stuff. Like, no, but that what you just said right there is, you know. And I think all comedians experience that. He you know, has crying. Brandon's. <laughs> um, oh, what did she say? He he had us crying in the car. We were almost almost <laughs> died in a car wreck, and he was telling jokes in the back seat, like so funny that we like, almost I, died. He is <laughs> deadly funny, right? Deadly, he is dark deadly funny. funny. Dark. Car accident dark funny. Dark and funny. Yeah, like so. Dennis Art. Stratford. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, I am like I'm like a groupie. So when he starts, when he feels himself and gets into that mode, you're like, oh my gosh, you know. So. And I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just saying Connecticut people and local people, but I don't know. But that whole that, crew is funny, though. That whole crew, hilarious, right? Daryl Roseman, oh my yep. God. Oh, yeah. He'll get you in trouble, though. He'll get you in trouble. So <laughs> funny. Uh. You can be on stage, but if he talks so much shit backstage, he'll get you in trouble. Because <laughs> 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 then you start talking shit, thinking that you're, you know? Oh, hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> So like he said, I'm not even going to go bigger because Connecticut, just the New England area alone has so many amazing comics, underground comics that people don't know. They are oh, TV worthy, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. So Definitely. I'm fortunate because I can book shows and, you know, the Jess Millers. I can have a show. She's great. And put yeah. them on it. And so I can sit back and watch them. But then I'm able to network and work with them, too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Onika McLean. Oh my gosh, right? Out of New York. She came and tore the funny bone up. Just ripped it down. <laughs> ripped it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stephanie McCray. I can't, I don't know. Yeah. I always Ste keep going. Steph oh, Stryker. yeah. Good people. Good great people. people. Great underground people that people don't even understand the level of funny that they bring. Well, Eric and Nolan, you are extremely funny, and we are so grateful that you came and, and went on our show tonight. Before we go, I just want to put it out there. I know Renee Smith and Cheryl Richards have had said hello and Pittsfield support oh, and need to support each other. So they're, they're <laughs> shouting you out, shout them back. And um, uh, is it, if there's anybody else that has any more questions, um, speak now or forever hold your peace, or at least until next week. I got a question. You spoke uh -oh. on, on, you know, no, this is all good. Cause you know me, you know how my mind works. You was talking about like, okay. So like, um, you was talking like, so what do you want to do? Like, as far as like merchandise, like different, like, do you just want to get the t-shirts or is there something? I mean, you can keep it on under the wrap, but I'm just saying like, uh, do you have, um, are you working on like a logo or design, you know, uh, your comedy company i'm just you know no i i was going towards the wine glasses because of course i always drink wine <clears throat> but since look at me like bam <laughs> what is that shea butter <laughs> no i do have shea butter but no i did a candle and you can't oh. see it. it's called erica nolan i hate this house candle <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's dope. a hand poured soy candle eight ounces what does it smell like I have some that are um, blackberry, citronella. Um, I have all different flavors. And I, I, te I did a test run and did a few. And I'm not selling them yet. And I, and, but that's what I plan to sell. My I hate, I hate this, this house. house candle because I hate this house. Yo, that is funny. <laughs> that's, that's funny as fuck. Oh, my yeah, God. That's a good one. <laughs> And on behalf okay. of uh, the, the quarantine call and show and comedy is a weapon, I will purchase a couple 
candy. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Get them up and running. <clears throat> Yes, Don't get us up and running because, like, Don't I got Erica, right. it's child, child labor in here. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, child labor. <laughs> child labor. Well, Renee Smith says she has a candle and it smells great. And she, she's yeah. already adding, she's doing her advertising for you as well. Oh, so. uh, yeah, because I went to a happy hour and I gave some of them away. Oh, okay. see? Because well, I'm, I'm not a good salesman. So I was like, here, just take these. Oh, my God. Put a price on them. Damn. Take the money. <laughs> take, take the money, the money. right? Take these are ten dollars. Okay. Okay. Right now, it's a good yep, price. Ten dollars. If you want, I hate this house candle. I have unscented. I believe they should be unscented because people fragrances mess with your allergies and things like that. But if you want, I have blackberry and citronella right now. Very. Where nice. can they get it? What they have to just hit you in your inbox? They just have to hit me up right now. Yeah, my website is down. I'm terrible, but um, just hit me up. Yeah, just say you want a candle and I'll ship it to you and we'll work it out. Look at you that. Know, Erica Badu sold out in like 10 seconds and she had her smelling like her vagina or something. I I don't know. Know. It was her, yeah. Don't do that. I ain't buying that if that's vagina smelling. <laughs> that. everybody I ain't that to. progressive. You know what I'm saying? I ain't See, that you gotta be Erica Badu to do that. If I were to sell a vagina candle, they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be Erica Badu status. To sell, oh. to even say you're selling a vagina candle. So you when I get to Badu, that status, right? When I get to that status, I'll be selling all types of weird <laughs> shit too. My <laughs> only scent is black cherry. <laughs> <laughs> could be a vagina. We don't know. Could yeah. be. My vagina oh, does smell like black cherry. See, people don't know that. <laughs> That's what you don't know. That's the secret. But my vagina <laughs> smells like. But this is the thing about Erica Badu. Like, I mean, can does she have enough vagina? Does she have enough WAP to, you know what I'm saying? To, you know, this is what I'm thinking. See, what many people don't know about Erica Badu is that she's also a Badula. So I right. think she's swiping some smells from some other WAP. See, you know, I wouldn't want to smell the WAP of anybody myself. <laughs> but I, that's just black cherry. <laughs> that I like black. I'll stick with the black cherry and the citronella. <laughs> okay. If oh, somebody's I'm... vagina smells like citronella, we have a problem, though. I'm just going to say that. Yes. Then you need to call to the doctor. You can keep right. the mosquitoes away, though, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might come in useful then on a camping trip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. Okay. Maybe okay. just open your legs. Just open your legs. And just... All right. God. Wait a minute. How did we get here? It got derailed. <laughs> Sorry, I mentioned it. <laughs> you know, like now we're talking about citronella lamps. What happens? <laughs> it's so easy. It's so easy. But now I'll stick to the black cherry. I, I don't think I'm going to do the wap quite soon. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to smell my wap. <laughs> I, I, I would like a... Uh, I'm gonna buy a candle that's just regular flavor. Thank you. Right. <laughs> I want to accent it, please, please. Uh, accent it, yeah, yeah. I got when enough I get, trouble. But when I get to that level, I'm gonna be selling all types of weird shit. You're like, all I right. know that bitch. I knew her. I was selling citronella candles. <laughs> Christmas is coming, you know. Right. This is gonna, everybody's gonna get some interesting gifts this year. Right. <laughs> Pittsfield on the map and shit. All right, right. Man. right. Pittsfield four one three. I love Pittsfield. Sometimes. Okay. okay. <laughs> awesome. Pittsfield. I smoked the strongest weed I've ever smoked in my life in Pittsfield, <laughs> and was so afraid for my life. <laughs> and I'm embarrassed because you got it from my cousin. It was at the end of a show. <laughs> it was at the end of a show. I'm like, hey Kim, thanks for coming down from the show. She's like, I gotta get this weed, and I look at the, the person I'm like, hey. Like, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah, it was. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Thank you. I'm like, what did right. you say? <laughs> right. Oh okay. my god. We're gonna erase that part. <laughs> <laughs> Erica six nine over here. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> Kim, Kim don't... let me into that conversation. <laughs> oh my Great. god. He, he wasn't my real cousin. <laughs> she didn't even wait for the DA's first offer. Right. I, I hear it was my cousin. He did it. Now. <laughs> I hear cybers at my door. These, these are just jokes. You're gonna well, get it, Kim. <laughs> well, that's it for tonight. It's the quarantine call-in show. We just Ooh. want to thank you, Eric and Nolan. You've made our night so much sweeter, and and we hope to see you out live soon. 
Uh, yes. We do have a postponed live comedy show, uh, summer comedy that it was postponed from yesterday because it was supposedly going to be inclement weather and then the weatherman lied and so then, then it was nice right. but right yeah. but it's now postponed to when Tim? Uh, it's actually uh, next Saturday September 5th um, same time if you already bought tickets they will be honored yeah you know, updated the link so you still can buy tickets we're selling tables so I mean come through I mean you know we're always funny always friendly I mean Kim gonna be there I'm gonna be there everybody else I mean I, I'll be there. I'm still shaking the dice you know what I'm saying like, <laughs> like they're they, they, they gonna be funny man you know what I'm saying I might have to do some yes. things with some laughter but I'm saying the, the, the difference the, the point is you're gonna get your money's worth and we always have a good time and let's you know let's laugh together yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I hope for good weather. Yes. Thank you. Oh, we're gonna do that one, rain, sleet, and snow. They played me. I, people was hitting me up like, "Look outside, Tim. It's sunny." I'm like, "Ain't this up?" Uh, yeah. Man, people know. need it. People need you know, this. You know, people were showing up. I heard so many people show. I was like, "Do you need me to come there and do damage control?" Like, people still showed up even after I told them it was canceled and did the lie. So I love that support. I want to say I love everybody who support comedy as a weapon. Um, you know, I do got to say that. I know this about Erica, you know, and Project Hilarious and the Funny Bone and Pittsfield and her cousin selling weed. But I do <laughs> got to say thank you to everybody who supports comedy as a weapon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Have a great night. We'll, we'll see you next time. It's the Quarantine Call-In <laughs> Show. Good night. Right, bye -bye. Good night. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Love you guys. Any U.S. citizen returning to the United States will be subject to up to 14 days of mandatory quarantine. Okay. We, we, we got that vaccine. Third eye clean, we visine. Dancing off the top rope, we dug the off them high beams. Running hard like track meets. Debutants and back seats. Nine cents for player feet. My piss test with five. Double parts on planet Mars. They surf the net, we surf the stars. Quarantine in Zanzibar. Breathing on the masses. Paper like.